Hi everyone, it's Adriana, and today we're gonna make three different kinds of white hot chocolate bombs. We'll start with the strawberry white hot chocolate bombs, then work on some peppermint hot chocolate bombs, and finish off with the caramel white mocha bomb. All right, to make these hot chocolate bombs, you will need a mold such as a silicone or acrylic mold, as well as a mat. And the first thing that we're going to do is melt some chocolate. So I just have some compound chocolate here. These are my two brands that I typically use. I'm gonna use Merkins today, and the other is the Ghirardelli one, which you can buy in stores. Merkins, you have to purchase online, and they come in little discs like this. So go ahead and add about eight ounces of your melts to a microwave-safe bowl, either silicone or plastic. Microwave-safe plastic works well here. Microwave that for 30 seconds on high power, then pull the bowl out and give it a good stir. Remember, you always wanna stir in between heating steps because that's gonna distribute the heat more evenly and prevent any kind of burning. After another 30 seconds, this is what my Merkins white chocolate looks like. So you can see that it's evenly melted. Now, if you need more background on compound chocolates or want to use real chocolate, you can check out my other video where I talk about all the different kinds of chocolates that you can use to make hot chocolate bombs. But in general, what you're looking for is a chocolate that has a fluid state such as this. The fluidity of chocolates are going to differ depending on if you use real chocolate or compound chocolates or just the variety of chocolates within a particular brand so you just want to become familiar with the type of chocolate that you are using this set of molds that i'm using is about two and a half inches in diameter and i'm pouring a little over two tablespoons of chocolate per cavity i then use the back of a small spoon to push the chocolate that is pooled at the bottom of the mold up to the sides we do this stuff first because we want to create a really thin layer of chocolate up against the inside of the mold so what's happening is that the mold is typically colder than the chocolate itself and so the chocolate that's touching the mold is going to start to set and we're going to pick up the mold and move the chocolate all around the inside of the mold and that's slowly going to create a thicker and thicker layer of chocolate that coats the inside of it. We're kind of emulating what pastry chefs would do when they fill a mold. I've seen them actually fill the entire mold with chocolate, but that's gonna require a lot of chocolate for our purposes. But what they would do is if they would fill the entire mold and then let the exterior of the chocolate set against the mold and then pour out the rest of the chocolate. So we're kind of cheating by just using a little bit of chocolate by filling the mold only halfway, but it's kind of the same effect. Once the inside of the molds have been coated pretty thickly, go ahead and quickly turn the mold over. So all of that residual chocolate is going to drip out really nicely. Just make sure you have a mat underneath. So I'm using a sill pack. You can use saran wrap or even a plate if you need to. This is going to harden up and then we can remelt it and use it again for decorations or for something else. Then after that, take something with a really straight edge, like a butter knife. I'm using an offset spatula here and scrape all of the chocolate off of the, the space in between the molds. The cleaner your edges look at this point is gonna help you get a really clean look when you put the two halves together. Then I take my Silpat mat, I fold it in half and I just put it in the freezer so that I can pick off the chocolate later. All right, now I'm gonna put the mold on a quarter sheet pan so it's easy to transport in and out of the fridge. Okay, now we're gonna do the final touch up. So you can use a paintbrush like I'm using here. It's just a food safe paintbrush, or you can use the spoon that you were using earlier. So you're gonna do two things. You're gonna look for bare spots and cover those up and make sure that there's no silicone exposed because those are gonna lead to holes in your sphere. And the second important thing is that I'm bringing up the chocolate to the edge. So I'm finding that when I'm making a lot of these, because we dry them right side up, like how you see here, a lot of the excess chocolate will drip down to the bottom of the sphere or hemisphere and kind of collect there, creating thinner edges. So as this is slowly drying, I'm kind of bringing up more chocolate to the edges so that it kind of matches the thickness all around because this is going to be easier if the edges are thick to put the two halves together and you're just going to have a more sturdy sphere. All right, and once you're satisfied with the look of your hemispheres, go ahead and place them in the fridge for about five minutes. Okay, here are the spheres that are cold from the fridge. So all you have to do to remove them is to pull the silicone mold back very slightly to expose the chocolate. <laughs> And that's my daughter running in the background. <laughs> and then remove the rest of the mold. Um, it should come out pretty easily. 
Okay, I got a little bit distracted there, but the key is that you always want to pull the mold away from the chocolate and not the chocolate out of the mold because the, the mold is meant to bend really easily. So just make sure that you're peeling the silicone off of the chocolate and not the other way around. So the first thing I like to do before assembling is clean up the edges on the spheres. Notice how it's kind of jagged along the edge. If you try to put them together really quickly when they look like that, you're going to get a really thin... Um, I call it the equator because <laughs> it is a sphere, but the middle of the ball is going to be kind of thin and delicate and it's going to look really messy. So what I'm going to do first is clean up half of them and then I'll do the other half later. So the filling for the strawberry white hot chocolate bombs is strawberry Nesquik. I found that to get a medium strawberry flavor, you will need about one tablespoon per sphere. This is for about eight ounces of milk. If you wanted a stronger strawberry flavor, you could probably go up to one and a half to two tablespoons per bomb. Then fill all the way to the top with mini marshmallows. Okay, so for a final assembly, we're going to clean up the edges on the other half of the chocolate hemispheres and use that residual melted chocolate around the edges to weld the two hemispheres together. So to decorate these hot chocolate bombs, I'm going to use some freeze-dried strawberries, which you can buy at Trader Joe's or Target nowadays pretty easily. And what I'm going to do is drizzle some of the leftover chocolate across each bomb and then sprinkle some of the crushed freeze-dried strawberries on top. Once the decorations have hardened on the tops, you can move them all to standard size cupcake liners for serving and presenting. Okay, next up we've got the peppermint white hot chocolate bombs. So there are a couple ways to add a peppermint flavor to your hot chocolate bombs. The first way is through an extract or an oil like this and we add that straight to the chocolate. The other way is to use a peppermint cocoa mix. So I'm going to show you how to use both but you can use either if you can only find one. As far as flavoring your chocolate, there's extract on the right and there's oil on the left. Now as a general rule of thumb, you always want to stick with oil based colorings and flavorings when working with real chocolate. So I'm going to use the oil for this product project but since we are working with compound chocolates is a little bit more forgiving there are already kind of additives in that chocolate i have used peppermint extract like that mccormick um, extract that i showed you just a second ago and what happens is when you add something that's water-based to a chocolate it will seize so you'll see it kind of harden up suddenly and what i did is i stuck this merkins compound chocolate back into the microwave and it turned out okay i don't know if that's going to work for all kinds of compound chocolates so if you can try to find this oil flavoring which I just found at Michael's. As for the amount of peppermint to add for about eight ounces of chocolate, I found about four to six drops of the oil works well or about a quarter of a teaspoon of the extract. Okay, so it's the same deal as the strawberry hot chocolate bombs. We're just going to pour in about two tablespoons per cavity. Use a small spoon to coat the entire surface of all the cavities. Move the mold around to create a thicker layer and then turn the whole mold upside down to dump out the residual chocolate. Use an offset spatula or knife to clean up the mold, then take your paintbrush and fill in any bare spots and bring up the edges. Chill in the fridge for about 5 minutes. Remove your hemispheres and clean up half of the edges again. Now to fill these hot chocolate bombs, we're going to use the peppermint hot cocoa mix that I showed you. And I find that one of these packets will easily fill three of the bombs when you use a little more than a tablespoon per bomb. This cocoa mix comes with little mini marshmallows, but I find that those are really tiny and they don't really give you that huge presentation of these things bursting open in chocolate. So I'm going to go ahead and add some mini marshmallows to the top of the halves. Then I have a few of these Andes peppermint crunches. So I chopped up a few of them and I'm going to add them to the inside of the bombs as well as to the top. Then go ahead and assemble the bombs in the same way that we did the strawberry hot chocolate bombs. And to decorate, I'm going to stay consistent with the drizzling technique. So using some leftover chocolate, drizzle over the top of each bomb and then sprinkle some of the Andes mints on top. The last bomb is a caramel white chocolate mocha bomb and this one's all about the fillings so go ahead and make your white chocolate shells. The first thing that we're going to add is instant espresso powder so this is the kind that you can just stir into water and it turns into espresso. I use this brand typically in my baking but I know that you can buy the Via Instant Starbucks little packets just make sure that you pick a really dark roast. 
So we're going to use about one tablespoon for eight ounces of milk. And this gives a very light espresso flavor in your drink. If you wanted a heavier coffee espresso flavor, you can easily double this amount. Now for this drink, I'm gonna use a white chocolate sauce as well as a caramel sauce. Add a couple teaspoons of each on top of the espresso powder. Now because we're adding syrups to the inside of these hot chocolate bombs, I would suggest consuming them within 24 hours of making them. It's also pretty important that you get a really tight seal around the middle of the two hemispheres, so you might want to do this after you've practiced with a few of the dry ones before. Okay, and totally optional, but you can't really have a hot chocolate bomb without mini marshmallows, so I'm gonna go ahead and add them to these bombs as well. And then go ahead and close up your bombs using the same technique that we used earlier. And to decorate these, we're just gonna drizzle some chocolate on top and sprinkle on some toffee bits. All right, let's see what each one of these bombs looks like when you pour some hot steaming milk on top. We'll do strawberry first, then peppermint, and end with the caramel white mocha. 